What's up guys and welcome to the channel FWA4. In this video, I'm just gonna show you how you can add supports on to 3D models and then print it out. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna show you how to add the supports and then we're gonna look at printing it out, getting it off the base, giving it a clean up and seeing the results from that as well. When you do load two files, you have to be careful that they don't merge together. So all you need to do is unselect them and then there'll be one model as opposed to two, one together. So just move that to the side. And then what we're gonna do is we want this model here to be standing upright for when we do it, but we only need it up around about, if we're gonna do a 90 degree angle, which I'll just show you now, so if I did plus 90 degrees, then he would stand up 90 degrees. So which is fine uh, for him to be standing, but we don't need him standing. So the same with the base. What we're gonna do is we're going to rotate that up as well, 90 degrees, and then that will be standing flat. So there you go, so it's just there. So we've got him and him. We do need to make these bigger. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna up the ante and just take them up around about 500. You'll see in the things that I click on for size wise. So that will just give you an idea. So if I put 500 here, then he will be over to 500. The same if I do it for the base. So 500. And then you'll see that that's the base and these little peg holes here are where the feet will go into it's just going to move that back out of the way just for a moment and what we need to do is we need to rotate them so that they're at a 40 degree angle so we will do that now so we already rotated it up 90 degrees so we just need to rotate it back 40 degrees you can do that if you want to by clicking on the arrows here so if i wanted to say i wanted to take it 10 degrees obviously i would take 10 degrees away from that but you know so we, if we kept going another 10 then we would have a 20 degree angle it's a bit confusing because obviously it's done where it is already a 90 degree angle so what we need to do is we just need to take it back until we have a 40 degree angle. So we're gonna keep going back. And as you can see, we'll take it all the way back until we've got a 40 degree angle. So there we go. But when you have him back like this, he is now touching the ground. So you wanna make sure he is up off of the ground because you don't want him touching the ground. So if you wanna, what you need to do is you need to click on this and then you need to lift it up off the ground at least by five millimeters. And I'll show you why that's so important. The same with this one again, we want to rotate this up so that we've got a 40 degree angle. So we can do that quite easily. And then we will do the same as we did on here. So if you remember with the Charizard, we rotated him back so that he was a 40 degree angle. We can do the same with that on the base as well. So if we just take that and then just put it at a 40 degree, then it will put it at a 40 degree angle. Um, but what we want to do is we want to just, we're gonna, just going to turn it around. We, we don't have to do it this way. You could have just done it so that it was the other way. But we want to turn it around so that we can see it. There you go. And we're just going to leave it like that. And then now we need to make sure that this is off the ground by also five millimeters. So we're gonna take that out five mil. This is sort of like the minimum we wanna take it. So as you can see now, they are both off the ground by that. And then you can double check by looking around the model and then double checking to make sure you are happy with the positioning. So I would probably put the more center, but this is just literally a guide uh, that I'm showing you here now. And what we want to do next is we want to add supports. So to add the supports, what we're going to do is we're going to take it out. We're going to double click in this box in the middle here, and that will take us out to see the sort of angle we have. And we're going to click on Charizard first, and then we're going to go to supports. So when we're here on the supports here, 
what we want to do is we want to just check so with the auto support angle it's at 40 degrees and um, i've got the density at 100 it's probably way too high but we're just going to keep it at that for the moment and the minimum support length is five mil so do you remember we lifted it off the ground for five millimeters well that's what that is for so that's the minimum support that it will give it if you did it three mil it wouldn't support it because that's not the minimum support you'd have to change this down to three mil if you wanted to do that but we're going to keep it at five we're going to do the auto supports and add it and then we're going to see what it does. And if you have any questions, just please do not hesitate to comment in the comment section down below with any questions that you might have. So there you go. So these are pretty decent supports. These are medium supports as well. So here, as you can see, you can have light supports, you can have medium supports and you can have heavy supports. I will go on about supports a little bit more with you at a later date. But what you want to do is you want to check to make sure that the supports have got everywhere on your Charizard before you go and print it out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go underneath and then have a look to see if there's any red spots that are missing. So as you can see, these are the red spots. You can zoom in if you want to. And then you can check. And then as long as you're happy with them, that's fine. Sometimes if there's something like a delicate area, I'll show you what I mean by that in a moment. I'm going to just lift it up. So as you can see here, these two supports there, I feel that they are probably quite big supports for what we need. So we will add light support. So click on light support. And then you want to go to delete. So here is a support. So as you see, it's just gone there. And you click delete. And that will remove that support. Then you can click on there again. And then delete. And that will remove that support. Now I want to add a light support. It's already on light support. So we click on add. And then we just click the tip of the tooth here. And it will add the support again, but it will add it light. And as you can see underneath the tongue, there is a red dot underneath the tongue and there's a little red dot there. So that probably we could do with having a support at the top of the mouth there. It might print fine, but there's no point in risking it. And then add in another support underneath the tooth and then maybe a little support just underneath the tongue there. One we can always really easily remove later on. As you can see, there are a couple of spots here where they're missing, so we'll add a light support there, one to the toe, one to the toe here, and probably just one to that toe anyway, just to make sure that that toe comes out good. And then the same with these red spots here, another one there, and then just go around the model. So I would keep the medium supports at the bottom. If you're doing something really big, then obviously add heavy supports and then work your way up to medium supports. But I always add light supports on detail where you can see. So what we need to do now, we're just gonna center that back into the middle. And then on this one, what we wanna do is we wanna add supports on that as well. So let's go to medium supports. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill those and then this is going to add it up to 40%, 100% density, and then 5%. And so, as I said, 100% is probably way too much. Um, but for now, we're just going to keep it on that, just while it's generating the supports. So there you go. It's added the support. What we're going to do is we're going to just rotate it around just to check that we're happy. So for some reason... Here, as you can see, it only added supports to the bottom. So it's a five millimeter depth. So we must have the angle at 50% as opposed to 40% because it's not supporting 40%. So let's take it to 50. So there you go. So we must have had it set to a 50 degree angle as opposed to a 40 degree angle and now it's supporting it up to 50%. So that's what we want to see. So we want to see that. If we got rid of the density, then it wouldn't be so thick. These wouldn't be so thick on the back there, and they would be a lot lighter, which would save you a lot more um, you know, material when you're doing that. Uh, I don't recommend you, ha you don't have to have your set at this, but always double check underneath just to make sure that you're you know your model is supported as you can see under here there are a lot of areas where it is still red and you can add supports to those if you want to on here but i don't think you really need to maybe some on the really big ones 
you could add something on there but it's entirely up to you whether you want to go down that route and add those but as you can see it's just added that little support once you're happy with it and you've been over it and you've added your supports in uh, what you want to do now is you want to be able to save this to a file so once you're happy and it's done there at the start if you haven't already selected your base for your printer I'll show you here now so this is where you select your printer so if you don't have the any cubic photo on m3 max like me then you will change it there if you want to see here this is like set to the custom default resin uh, slice parameters are here so my bottom exposure is 50 and these are my time so if you want to copy that then just go ahead that's absolutely fine my prints have come out every time perfectly and also they come off the base really nicely and they don't have trouble sticking so that is always a good thing but once you've done that and you're happy with your model what you need to do is you just select all and then you slice your files once you've sliced your files then you just add them to your usb stick and then they are going to be ready to print so it's as easy as that uh, if i've missed anything or if you have any questions please let me know um, but this will show us like a, a demo of the model and how it's going to start to print so it shows you from the bottom all the way up until it has the final model on there so that will be the last piece and then the models will be printed we will take this over and we will do that it's going to tell me that it's going to take five hours and 14 minutes if you want to see a video of me hollowing stuff out to save on resin if you want to see the density changed and stuff like that then just please contact me it's telling me that's going to cost me about 25 um dollars to be able to print something like this and it's going to consume 115.613 mil of that so these are the slice settings here as i said if you want to check those or take those down please do so uh, because i'm absolutely fine with you doing that and the layer parameter here is how i've got mine set so this is how i choose to do mine uh, you may want to change yours and do it differently but this is how i've chosen to do my ones once you press save to disk then obviously you can just save it to your usb stick and then we're going to go over to the printer we're going to print it and then we're going to show you how to remove the supports and then we're going to have a look at the model once it's done right so now that we have sped through the setup of actually loading it onto the printer as you can see here this is just the final steps of it printing out so I just wanted to show you that so you could kind of get an idea of what it will look like when it is going through and then with this section here you will see that this is the final piece and then we're just going to have a quick close look at the support so we did change the density on it a little tiny bit so that the supports weren't so heavy on the outside but as you can see here the print came out absolutely perfect so it was set up really nice and it's just going to be so easy to take it off i won't be able to show you taking it off of here but what i'm going to do is i will show you in another video of us taking it off the build base but on this video we're just going to show you removing the supports you will need to go and grab yourself something to fill up so i have water washable resin here so as you can see with the water washable resin it's a lot easier for me to just fill up a tub with warm water and then to dip the prints into the vat so what you want to do is you want to try and just kind of wash off all of this you can get fancy devices which i do actually have myself as well where you can wash and cure them where it will spin the water around but you know what just dipping them in the water like this is good it's just obviously trying to dispose of the water afterwards so once you have them off the um, and once you have them soaked in there enough then you can see that they're just so easy to get off but remember this is kind of like making the resin soft so remember that the also the print is going to be soft as well so that's what you want to take into consideration when removing the supports that the resin is actually softening as well but it makes it nice and easy for the supports to be removed as you can see they're literally falling off you will have a little bit of um, I call them nibs where they will leave where they've attached but you can really easily sand those away but again in another video i will be showing you how you can do that but let's just take a look at removing them so as you can see i tend to start with the bottom ones you just got to be careful with the hands anywhere like the teeth and the back of the head because they are going to be the brittle areas which you want to watch every time i remove something from the support 
what I do is I just give it another dip back in the water just so it removes anything. Because if you have a little tab on there and you've forgotten about it, when you go to cure this, what will happen is it will just be really bad for the, you know, for the support on the bit that it's on. You can go get these. These actually come with most resin printers, to be honest with you. And they are just fantastic. So look at that. So you just kind of grab the bit that you want to remove and you can just kind of like pull them or snip them away and they just work really well. If I put my hand in there, I'd probably break off one of his teeth or his tongue or something like that. And these little ply things are really, really cool. So I will leave a link in the description so you can check those out just in case you wanted to go pick up a pair for yourself. But as I said, most printers come with them. We're now going to pop the base in. So as you can see here, we're just going to give it a good wash. I always recommend, and I will tell you this 100%, always recommend wearing gloves if you are washing your resin prints. Do not use your bare hands. One, because obviously the resin isn't good to get on your skin because it'll be irritant. Two, it will ruin your 3D prints. So your fingers will get warm and they will stick and they will just make the detail disappear on your 3D prints. So please always wear gloves when you're doing this. As I said, if you want to, you can bottle the water up in something and take it somewhere and dispose of it somewhere that's got chemicals in it. But as I said, this is tainted water now with resin particles. So just be careful. But look at these supports. They're just absolutely falling off the print because they're just really, really good to be able to warm them up. So as I said, you don't want the water like really, really hot, but you don't want it really cold. So you want to just have it like a nice lukewarm water, just like when you've run the bar for a while and you've let it get to a temperature where you want to get in. That's kind of what you want to do. So as you can see here, it looks so good, so detailed, and it's really flat. Look at the detail on that. It's just incredible. So we're going to give one more little wash, and then what we're going to do, we're going to take it over, and when we take it over to cure it, I have a device, an Anycubic device as well, where I have the wash and cure station, but you don't have to do that, guys. You could just leave this guy on the windowsill overnight, uh, and just wait for the morning and then all the sunlight coming in and then just leave him while you're at work and when you come back he'll be cured you might want to rotate him a little bit around but that will just be enough to cure him off so what I do is I just do a test fit so you want to make sure wearing gloves again you can go get yourself a clean set and then just make sure that his tabs on his feet fit and I like to put them together so if there's any shrinkage or anything like that it will happen together as opposed to on its own so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to cure for around about 10 minutes. I'm going to leave it to go. And then once that's done, we'll do another video showing you how to get rid of the little tabs, how we can paint this up and, you know, any other steps. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Please like and share. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care now. Bye-bye.